Thanks for listening to Exploring the Wine Glass podcast, the podcast for people who love wine. I'm Lori Budd, a UC Davis winemaking program and WSET Level 2 graduate. You can find Exploring the Wine Glass on all the socials as well as your favorite podcast catchers. If you haven't subscribed yet, now's the perfect time. I promise I'll never tell you what to drink, but I'll always share what's in my glass. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Exploring the Wine Glass. In early March, there was an incredible event happening in New York City called Strong Women Make Big Bordeaux Bottles, and I was privileged to have been invited to attend. The massive on-taking involved 65 of New York's top restaurants and wine bars celebrating women in winemaking, with a limited selection of Bordeaux wines by the glass, all poured from double magnum bottles. Unfortunately, I had hip surgery the previous week and was unable to attend, but thanks to the hard work of Stephanie Schwab of Gregory and Vine, I was able to interview three of these amazing women. We talk about male versus female roles and views in the wine industry, the romance of pouring from large format, what it's like living and working in an industry that is such a long tradition, and the feeling you get when someone is enjoying the fruits of your labor. If you enjoyed this episode, please take a moment to subscribe, rate, and review. I'd love to be able to hear and share your thoughts on the podcast. Enjoy the conversation. Slancha. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Exploring the Wine Glass, sponsored by Dracina Wines. Today, I have a very special treat for you on Allure of the Poor. I am sitting down with some incredible women from Bordeaux who produce outstanding wines, and they are here to show the strong women, and the event with strong women, big bottles, and uh, I have to first start off with the picture is awesome. I love the photo of all of the ladies with the bottles. Well, they are in New York City, and unfortunately, I was on the wrong coast, like I always am, and I couldn't visit them personally, but they were gracious enough to sit down and have a conversation with me and to share their stories with my listeners. So welcome. Bonjour. Welcome, ladies. Hello. Hi, hi. So if you guys want to do a little brief introduction of who you are, where your winery is located, and we'll start with that. Hi, everybody. I'm Sophie from Chateau Faux Castle It's a 200 years old um, estate based in Listrat Medoc on the left bank. And um, we'll talk about the uh, future of the Medoc for my part today. Hello, I'm uh, Sylvie Courcel from uh, Chateau Thiolet. Chateau Thiolet is a family winery I run with my sister Mary. Uh, this is a 100% uh, female estate now. Uh, it's uh, located in Entre de Mer at uh, 25 kilometers uh, uh, east from Bordeaux City. And we produce a large range of wine, including uh, wa- dry white wine, rosé, clairé, or different kind of red, cremant as well, so we can talk about it uh, later. So I'm Caroline Perrova, Uh, I'm the owner of Chateau de Steron, with uh, Xavier, my husband. I joined him in 2012, Uh, I was used to work with Veronique Sander, so it was a pure uh, female team at Chateau Aubaï, so I spent 15 years with her, and I decided to join my uh, new adventure with Xavier, my husband, at Chateau de Steron. So Serence, uh, Chateau Terence is in the Grave Appellation, and uh, at the same time, we belong to the Serence Appellation, the name of the Chateau. Serence is the smallest and most confidential appellation of Bordeaux today. So I, I will be very proud to be uh, an ambassador of uh, this same very, very small appellation. That is, that is wonderful. That is uh, amazing. To, my my first question, I don't want to bombard you with um, female versus male questions because I'm sure that's what you've been doing for an entire week. Uh, but so I have I, I have to start off with some of that. Uh, but then uh, I don't know if they uh, 
introduced me a little bit, but my husband and I have a, a winery in Paso Robles. So I would love to hear some wine making strategies and what you what you look for uh, in your fruit and that and um, but we'll get the we'll get the female uh, strong stuff and uh, figure out where we go from there. Um, I think in general winemaking is a male predominated industry, no matter where you are. Uh, but I think. The premise in Bordeaux is very strong that it's a male-focused industry. So it's wonderful to see women coming up through it. Do you, do you agree with that concept that Bordeaux is very male-focused? I think, I think Bordeaux has a very conservative image um, because it's, uh, the, the weight of tradition is very heavy to carry, but, um, but I think it has changed for for a long time now, for at least uh, 20 years, uh, because there are more and more women for for many years, for sure in production, for making the wine. Uh, for um, uh, there are a lot of women still, but the proportion of uh, of, uh, of women uh, is increasing a lot. Uh, at for example, in the, at the Faculty of Enology of Bordeaux, today today uh, 65% of uh, students are uh, our girls so um, in Bordeaux so uh, and in 1990 they were only two or three per class per promotion now they're 65 percent so the, the uh, women are are very uh, well integrated now in the wine industry in Bordeaux and are they so here the general path is you know, many people actually don't even go to school. They, it's all hands-on education. So is that, is that how it is in Bordeaux, where you have a large portion of people who are just going from harvest to harvest to learn hands-on? Or do you see more people, male or female, in school and going that route? Um, I, I would say, but I don't, I, I don't have the figures, but I would say that uh, more and more uh, People go to school and learn about it, and it's a part of the big change in Bordeaux. And I, I would say, in, the, in lots of wineries of our friends, the, the knowledge has increased a lot. And thanks to uh, our universities and those uh, specializations, I think going to school and um, for me, it's a very personal. Uh, um, but for me. Uh, going to school and getting my uh, diploma of analog or my diploma of uh, engineer in agriculture uh, was also a way to say, okay, I, I have the diploma, I can do it, I'm a woman, but uh, uh, I know, I have all the knowledge. So um, it was, well, it was a, a way to, um, uh, to prove uh, my father to say, okay, I can do it, I think. So education was really important. Uh, to me, um, in, in my personal story. It's interesting to your question because of course we need education, but I think we had this education. We are the generation like you. We had this education chance, but I think now we have a new something is changing again. On the on each estate, you start to have a diversity of talents. It's incredible to see that. Uh, depending on the size of each estate and of, of course the goal uh, of each estate if they want to develop in an tourism or if they want to develop uh, with art. You have a lot of people who start to work in the, in the vineyard but they come from another world. They, they, they were chefs in restaurants and now they are driving a truck. Uh, they were, they study uh, uh, art. Uh, everywhere in the world and suddenly they arrive and they help you to do your communication, to communicate about the estate. So you have plenty of different talents. I love it. Uh, so because and, and, and I think as a woman we have this flexibility to see the talent of everybody and to say she will help me, she's not from the world of the wine, she will help me in develop my idea which is organizing for example 
I don't know what for Christmas, a big event around the sweet wine, so I don't know what. But you have in each estate, estate a multiplicity of different talents. And that's fun. So that's more that, that only an agriculture um, uh, a, a, a school, uh, you, you need this, of course, but you have a lot, lot, lot of different talents yeah. to arrive. I agree with uh, Caroline. I think now our, being a winemaker is not only uh, making wine. It's, uh, it's so much more about, so much more, and uh, you have to be very, uh, very uh, gifty, but uh, talented, but also multitasking. I think uh, it's so important to be multitasking in this, you in you this, uh, in this uh, job, and I think women. Uh, can be more multitasky than men. So right. we have a, that's a good point for us. But don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I have to agree with that 100%. Um, my husband and I, we have the division of labor, and he deals with the legal stuff because I can't sit still long enough to learn the legal stuff or care to learn the legal stuff, and I do everything else. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I do the social media. I do the selling. I'm the one who's going to the restaurants. I'm doing all that. Um, he's very compartmentalized. Where I, you know, and I agree. I think that is a huge advantage. I think women are able to do that a lot um, more efficiently than or effectively than men are or men do. So, do you? Um, think that it was more difficult for you to be accepted because you were a female? Like if, if you had the same credentials as a, per, a male, do you think that there would be a difference or do you think that they're opening up to not seeing the gender? <laughs> that's, that's a tough question to actually answer honestly, I'm sure. <laughs> I think it, it, it was new for them. We have to be honest. We say, okay, it's not a problem anymore. But uh, 20 years ago, they were happy to see a young girl arriving in the team. But they were the boss. And uh, so it, I think in terms of management, it, it, it took time and it takes time because um, when you are alone in the middle of all the, uh, of men, only when you are the only woman, they are very strong to when you start to speak. And I think we have another way to and to to go into a conversation. We are we think a little bit differently. And when they are all together, they break your energy sometimes. Or they and and you it needs time to wait. They finish to speak, and again you say okay. I continue, I will speak, I will speak again. I am part of the bureau from the syndicat des, des Graves, from the old Graves Avalation. I am the only, only woman again. And I think it takes time. It's not so easy because uh, they have their codes and we have another code and sometimes it's complicated to explain exactly what you want to say. Right. So it needs energy. But I think... Uh, we have a lot of different questions uh, in the cellar, it was complicated, of course, 20 years ago, because uh, before it was forbidden for women to go into the, into the cellar, uh, and uh, because they were breaking the arrows, t turning the wine, so it was uh, very, very bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, and it, and it's a question of, are you strong enough? to move the tubes to uh, when you are pregnant, uh, is it possible? It needs an, another organization mm -hmm. and it's a chance when you work in a team who accept to reorganize the things, the six months you are pregnant, the six months you have something or if it's too heavy and uh, voila. So I think it's, uh, it needs, uh, it, it needs uh, time, it's coming and we are complement complementary, but we have good points and bad points in the, in the technical uh, <laughs> and we have to know that. Okay. Um, my, um, my <laughs> when I was born to, uh, in uh, 78, my father was crying because he had a, a second daughter, so uh, I'm not sure I was 
so well accepted because in, in his mind, you know, nobody could uh, take over the business uh, after him because he had a, another, another daughter. So it was uh, funny how, how fast the things have changed because now we, we, we were with my sister. So I'm not sure uh, at that time uh, women were so uh, accepted. Uh, for for him, it was impossible to uh, to imagine that uh, we would um, uh, manage uh, the the vineyard uh, together. So it's true that you know the the, the thing things have has changed, but it took at least I, I think it took uh, like 40 years to be so well uh, accepted. It's difficult to change tradition. It's, it is. Yeah, yeah. I think we have the chance to. I don't know if you have children, but uh, our children, through the next generation, they, for them it's something, it will be easier, I think, uh, because uh, they, have, they, they, they are architects, they are doctors, they are everything you can imagine, and, um, and so for them it, it's not a problem. The only question, we spoke about that yesterday, we hope they will not forget, sometimes it's difficult to to keep your place in, uh, as a woman, uh, so they have to be realistic and uh, to know. Uh, but I think they are much more relaxed, the, 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 mm -hmm. the girls, with this question. Me? As we are. As we are. I do. You know, things. It, it's always easier to just keep rolling with, you know, the snowball that's going down the hill. And if you're the person or the group or that generation that is forcing, you know, trying to stop that snowball and change its direction, it's tough for that generation. But once you divert that snowball down a new path, the people behind you have a lot easier thing, and a lot e easier path. And uh, I do, I think that there, you know, I've asked this question to pretty much every female winemaker. You know, we there's awards for best female winemaker, and although that's an honor, Clay, wouldn't we rather just be best winemaker? You yeah. know, yeah. 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 But it's, yeah. it's the the same thing happens in uh, cooking, for example, in in France. Also, we have uh, the. In the, as a chef, uh, you have to prove. I think it's not a, only about in in the wine industry yeah. that you have this kind of a, a fight or this kind of a, um, yeah shift. Um, so it's every in your life, uh, you know, women are to show maybe a little bit more than, uh, but in general life, I would say, not mm -hmm. only in the wine industry. Correct, correct. But we are not unhappy. Huh? No, no, it's okay. <laughs> we can manage. We don't complain. No. <laughs> we don't want to complain. No. Um, so, in terms of wine making process, have you all worked your way through the whole process? Started as the cellar rat. I don't know if you. I guess we call it a cellar rat. Is that what you call it in Bordeaux? The the person who who does all of the the grunt work, the cleaning, all of that stuff. Have you worked your way up through that process? I do. I uh, I failed in a tank when I was a baby, so uh, <laughs> uh, I was involved in the uh, in the winemaking process very young. So yes, and I want to keep doing it because uh, even if I'm in charge of the sales, uh, I want to know my uh, my wines perfectly. I want to be able to talk about it and to give details. I think it, that's really important, and then this is what I like in my uh, in my job. It's also to participate to the to the winemaking process. And I am lucky because the, this is a, a family estate, so um, uh, I can replace my sister. She can. We are very uh, complementary, and also um, uh, we can replace each other. Uh, that's important to participate to the big event. And I think. These ladies also, uh, I'm sure they're involved in the blending, in maybe not in all the process, but uh, for the big moment, uh, it's important to get uh, everybody's uh, point of view. Yeah, that's right. That's what I do. I'm more focused on sales and marketing, so maybe I, I wasn't uh, uh, 
tell a rat that I, uh, maybe I was a, a sales rat on the field and um, trying to, to sell wine and maybe I was among the first women doing uh, that for Bordeaux company at the beginning. Um, but yes, today uh, for all the very strategic steps of the vinification of the winemaking process, uh, I do take part because it's so important to, to be aware of the quality of the, the estate, of the wine, or, and also about the, maybe the difficulties um, and to be able to talk about it with all the team uh, in the vineyard, in the cellar, because we are like a very small company and we are not in, uh, only on one task, but all together on the same way with the same target. So the sharing uh, the successes and also the difficulties. Mm -hmm. so, and, and I am not a seller rat. My, <laughs> my husband is a seller rat. <laughs> his family estate. Uh, I arrived uh, as I was 20 years old. And my passion is the vineyard. So uh, every morning when I am in Terence in the morning, I spend minimum 30 minutes or one hour, depending on my timing, uh, in the estate, and I start at 8 o'clock with uh, our team. And so my my passion is really uh, to uh, take care of the team outside uh, and to follow every day what happens, the, the different uh, the different work we have. And for me, uh, it helped me at the beginning a lot to know each plot, and now because we are in a sustainable uh, process like everybody here, uh, it's, a, it's a great, great, great way to help me during the blend. So I, I take care in the vineyard, Xavier is in the cellar, and we meet together in the, during the tasting and the blend, because I know each tank, each plot, and uh, he and he, he take the really after, and I love, I really love to be in the vineyard. So I am not specialist in the cellar, but I am more uh, focused on the in the vineyard, and I am in charge of uh, the sales and the communication. So lots of different jobs. So, like you. <laughs> yeah, so I I love being in the vineyard too. We do not grow our own fruit. We source our fruit because. It takes so much time and so much effort, and we want to focus our abilities onto the wine making part of it. And we source from farmers that are experts in growing the fruit the way we want it to be grown. Uh, but I love walking through the vineyard and, you know, with the vineyard manager and discussing what we would like to happen to the fruit so that. Ultimately, we harvest fantastic, uh, fantastic fruit, um, and I don't think there's any place prettier than in a vineyard. I, you know, it's it's always a great place to be. Um, all right, so there was actually a little research on, uh, and by little, I mean I'm I'm a microbiologist, so for me to do research, I expect like large populations. This is not so, but this one research. Um, it was in November of 2014 from PLOS One, and that they found that there was no significant difference between the weights of olfactory bulbs between males and females. There was a significant difference in the actual total number of cells, that females have 43% more cells in their olfactory system than males, and that there's a 49% more difference in neurons. So females, generally speaking, have more neurons in their olfactory system. So by, <laughs> by extrapolation, they say that we have a better palate and we are better uh, winemakers or blenders, tasters than males. So what do you think about that? <laughs> we are shy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just want to say that uh, I often say that 
to be uh, for wine to be beautiful, you don't always need to be powerful. It can be fine and elegant. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's a female point of view, or just um, uh, a focus more dedicated to uh, quality and complexity compared to showing your muscles and your strength. But is it on the female point of view? I don't know. But it's, it's, it's interesting because when you, you work during all the process, vinification process and taste the wines, most of the time you are with men because the, the consultants are very often men and the, the seller master, because he has a lot of muscles, is a man. And so you are in the middle of a men team. But I think they are very careful. When you are here, they are more careful and the, 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 their way of communication is different when there is a woman or not. Because when you are not there, they are most of the time the, la, the one, I, I, I don't know how to say that, but it's, it's a competition of a lot of time between the men and to know who is the most influenced during tasting. And when there is a woman, there, the, the, the relation change completely and they are very, very careful because we break this play of who is the best one and you are in the middle and you doesn't enter in their game. And so I think it's very interesting when you, you work during the blend with the men, they are much more carefully at what they say. That's my, oh, that's my analysis. Pure my analysis, it's not, a, but I feel it, I have this feeling all the time when you are here, they are much more careful. I think there are, personally, I think there are more uh, differences of um, taste between uh, generation than between uh, male and female. Do you understand uh, what I mean or not? So I understand what you say, but I'm, I'm more curious. I'm curious as to hear why you. For example, uh, um, sorry for taking the personal uh, examples, but uh, when I was tasting the first time between my uh, fa my um, uh, with my uh, father, my sister, and I for making the wine, for making blends, for example, um, I don't think it was a, a female and. A, um, a male um, palette problem. It was because my father, his generation, they were. He was told that a, a, a man, um, a wine, uh, had to be like this, powerful, structure, a lot of tannins, a lot of. You know, he, 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 he has the this idea of, of of a great wine, and we had another idea because because. Uh, Things have changed, the market has evolved a little bit. So the image of a, a good wine um, had, um, had changed. So I think it was more a generation uh, gap than a very um, palate uh, problem, I think. And now, a word from our sponsor. Looking to be in the know about Dracaena wines? Want to know when we release our new wines? Find out about all of our accolades and get some behind-the-scenes information? Well, all you need to do is sign up for our newsletter. There is no commitment necessary, and I promise you we won't spam your mailbox with loads of messages. Need another reason to sign up? Quite possibly the best reason? You will immediately get a code for a special discount on all of our wines and be privy to newsletter-only specials. Let Dracaena Wines turn your moments into great memories. Sign up simply by heading to our website, dracaenawines.com, and fill out the pop-up or sidebar. It will take less than a minute of your time, but the rewards will last forever. Oh, that is interesting. interesting. That is interesting. And again, that goes back to tradition. You know, what... what used to be being made versus how the wine nowadays has evolved into a, a whole other identity for itself. It's, it's no longer let me just get tannin in there so that it lasts forever, you know, and that when you drink it, you, you know, you're going to be sitting down with that huge steak 
and yeah. you need something to build up with that. We're now having wines that that have a life of their own where they're they're softer, they're being paired with a whole variety of different foods, um, or no food at all. People are drinking just to enjoy the wine. That's I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, to um, uh, I would like to add that uh, with my sister, our philosophy is to find the best balance. A ba ba balance uh, for for the wine, for the vines, for for the life in general. But uh, that's really important to keep in mind to find with, and balance between modernity and tradition. I don't want to make a, a wine that uh, people love all over the world, but that don't look like a Bordeaux style. We have to find a great balance between tradition and uh, techniques. Techniques, a great tradition, a great balance for for the style of wine is really important. I agree with that. I like that. And you know, I, I don't think that I've heard it put that way before um, about the generational thing. And I like it. Good kudos to you. <laughs> but the new generation, they, uh, they are more focused about uh, maybe beer or, uh, or spirits or, and um, we have to catch them. Um, and this is our challenge, but this is very general. It's not about only Bordeaux uh, task, but this is a very uh, a general uh, challenge. We we do have you have the same right. thing. So um, so we have to find a way to um, to be very attractive uh, for for the newer generation. Right. I just did a podcast like two weeks ago about the decline in wine sales across you know, across the whole board, and uh, with the big, you know, we talked about the, the, the seltzers and how the, the millennials love those flavored seltzers, and that, uh, you know, you, you can't compete with a flavored seltzer, because we don't want to compete with a flavored seltzer, <laughs> you know, that's a whole different, that is a whole different thing, but it is true, we need to figure out how to bring them back and in all honesty, those big, massive wines are probably not the wines that are going to bring people who are trying the seltzers and enjoying the seltzers. We need to have our stepping stones a little closer to where they can then learn to appreciate the, the wines, you know, the, those move in different levels, getting them back to understanding how wonderful wine is. Uh, so my curiosity is, how did you all get together? So the, it's it's the women of Bordeaux making wine. I believe there's 20 in the in your group. Is that what we? 20, 20, 20. <laughs> so how did this organization or this group? How did you come together? I'm not a winemaker, sorry, nobody's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, if you drink wine, you're perfect. That's all yes, that I know. Yes, I do yes she does. Uh, I'm, a <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a good consumer. Uh, so I'm from the Bottle Wine Council, you know, the Germanic body, which is the organizer of this program. And in fact, this program so gather um, winemakers, restaurants, and importers. Mm -hmm. And all together, we think that this idea of having women and large formats, because you know this program is about serving wine by the glass, but using large format. And large format is really something which is incredible, it's eye catching. Even if you put water <coughs> in large format, people like it. <laughs> so, and um, so um, we started to. Um, explain this action and finally a lot of people wanted to participate. It's a try, it's a first time for us, but it seems to be very successful because some restaurants in New York, they already have shortage of wine. Uh, it's supposed to last one week, but uh, for some of them it will last, it will end today because they don't have any more wine, so this is really very good. And they are also very happy because the consumers, their guests in the restaurant or in the wine bar are also very happy. Um, the program covers 66 restaurants in New York, 
And you can show the, um, it's a large diversity of restaurants and wine bars. So we think to do that maybe next year in other American cities. So maybe on the West Coast. <laughs> there you go. Then I'll probably be on the East Coast at that point because as Steph knows, I'm always on the wrong coast. <laughs> right. And yes, and the winemakers, they were chosen because they were, um, they embodied the diversity of bottles. We have dry white, we have red, we have left bank, we have right bank, and also different vintages. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, okay. <laughs> it's a great, great group. Well, we are very proud of it, that. It was, very, it was really fun. The first day we met together, I don't know if you received the picture of uh, all the women on the berry. Did you see that? Yes. Yeah. yeah that, that was the first day we met. And uh, huh? all together, all together, yeah, we knew, 20, we knew the, 20, the, 20, the 20 together, and um, we were by uh, at Chateau Pocatastin, at, Pouca at, at oh. Chateau Pocatastin, with a nice uh, caterer, and it was uh, we were we feel like queens, <laughs> and uh, and it was fun because uh, we had to be made up. So as you can see, we are not make we have no makeup uh, naturally. So we started like that, and we say but it's a caricature of the femininity. We are not like that, but it was sort of a joke, and everybody started like, like that, and it was a good. Um, I think it was very interesting because uh, uh, we had good relations. We we know each other, but never only with and, uh, with women. So the conversation was different, and it was very yes. it's very rich. The, we are together since three days. With the other one, one will be grandmother in two minutes. So that she left. So you see the life of the woman in wine. Uh, we are we are taking care. Of, she will give us a good view. So we are only three now, but um, it's a great experience because uh, uh, again it, it, we are close together now, and I think it's it's nice to speak about this subject. Because usually we never speak about that. We have to say that. And uh, it's fun to speak about that in three days. And we say, oh, yes, and da 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 So uh, it's a nice subject for us. Yes. And we, we, we feel like uh, belonging to now the uh, same community. Uh, so we, we are now members of the strong women community. No. It's more than, more than that. And I would say that. Uh, at the first uh, sight, when I when I saw uh, information of, about the program, I was very enthusiastic uh, um, about the idea of just being here in New York and just making people try bottle wines again because it's why we work all year long in order to pour our wines and to see people just enjoy them. And what I really like uh, as well in, uh, in the group is that we can share together our fear, our problems, the, the, but also our positive uh, points. And I think women, they can, they, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they share more than men. A man uh, won't, say, won't say if it's, if it's not mm, confident. confident or if it doesn't try mm -hmm. it. Uh, the private side of a man is... Uh, Something maybe uh, be between the in the group, the the women are sharing a lot, and I think uh, that's a very woman thing. <laughs> <laughs> we talk from breakfast and we never finish. That's nice. Is this your first time in New York, or have you no. been here before? Yes. So you have a great time. You ah. you. Uh, so I come regularly for work, but uh, I, I have a part of my family living in the U.S. as well, so that's why it's not my, uh, my first time. My mom was American. You oh, can't oh. hear that because I, I'm not fluent, but uh, my mom uh, uh, yes, uh, was born in New Jersey. So, <laughs> from New York. so I was going to say that because I was reading the bios, but then I didn't remember whose was whose, like, you know. Um, but, so I'm from New Jersey. That's where uh, uh, good to know. That's that's <laughs> where I am from. <laughs> I was like, look at that, and she had, she's in Bordeaux now. I'm like, see, dreams can come true. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so 
your wines were have been paired with restaurants. Did you have you visited those restaurants? Pro, like, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. we we haven't finished. This is the part of the job. I mean, we want to visit yeah. uh, the different restaurants participating to, uh, to, to, to the operation, to the program, and uh, we want to say hello, how is it going? That's important that they see female faces and that they can uh, see that behind the bubble there, there's a woman. I think that's really important, and we enjoy doing this, even if it's tiring. <laughs> uh, did, um, have you been at a restaurant where there's been customers drinking your wine and yeah, exactly. yeah. did you yeah. go to the table? Did you go to the table? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so today I think we we saw twenty how many restaurants did we did we visit? So yeah. Yeah. Fifteen yesterday. Oh. Uh, <laughs> different groups. So we were we shared a group in three or four. And that was fun because we visited some restaurants. Uh, most of the restaurants they had other bottles from the group, but not our our uh, uh, own bottle. So it's fun to to explain the other wines, to speak about vinification, to answer the question uh, with other bottles as yours. And that's a good point too, because it's uh, more open uh, in the right. mind collective. Yeah. yeah, but that was interesting. It's a great exercise. <laughs> It is uh, it is an incredible feeling when you're out somewhere and you know you look over. My husband and I'll be at dinner someplace and we'll look over and our bottle will be on somebody's table. Okay. And it, it it doesn't get old. That feeling just doesn't get old. It's it's uh, it's a wonderful feeling to see it happening. Um, so with with your wine that you were pouring here the the um, large format. Uh, there's large format and you were saying that you have white and you, or is it just red in the large format? No, no, red and, and white, white, white and sweet white. Oh, okay, okay. They are one rosé, but uh, we didn't, uh, well, the winemaker, we, the winemaker well, when, is not there, but there's also rosé. And oh. I have a turn on the Cremant, so next uh, next, uh, next yeah. year I will propose also my uh, Cremant de Bordeaux. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let me know that date. Let me know that date. Um, <laughs> so there's something romantic, I think, about large format bottles. They, it's, I, I, it's just so beautiful to look at and uh, incredible to see when it's being poured out. Do you feel, do you love making large format? Is that but something? More and more. I think we, a lot of uh, people ask to have big format, large format. And um, it's, it's completely different if you are eight people and you have four bottles on the table, or if you offer a double magnum, uh, nobody will forget you offer the double magnum. And uh, so that's much more impressive and gener it's generosity for me, uh, the big, big size of water. But I think also it's a very festive, uh, festive format uh, because um, um, in, in our mind, um, it's true that you, uh, you, you drink big format for uh, specific occasions, but here it's for uh, everyday uh, wine. It's the wine by the glass. So I think I like the, um, the, 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 contrast, the contrast between the image image we have uh, of the big format and the, the way we pour it uh, for the program. I think that's a very, uh, very, very nice. Do, do you, um, when you're producing your wine and you're getting ready to, you're doing your blending and you're doing all that, do you have in your mind this is what I want to make in a large format, this is going to be a 750, or is it really just we're going to make this wine and it's the same wine that you're putting in a 750 in a large format? Is there any, is there any technical things you need to keep in mind when you're making that wine if it's going into large format? Well, that's, for me, that's important that it's the same wine 
in the normal bottle and in the big format. You will, I don't want to adapt my wine to the, 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 the size of the bottle. I think that's a mistake. And, uh, so for me, it's uh, the same wine and it has to be. And for me, so it's my decision at the winery uh, uh, about the amount of, or the volume we're going to put into uh, seven, 75 milliliters or big format. And depending on the vintage, depending depending on the yield, because we don't, when you don't have a large volume, more often you you don't produce too many uh, big formats and focus and bottles. Uh, but every year we we do make a big formats. And just for for the story for this program, uh, one of my wines doesn't exist in large formats. It doesn't it exists only in 75 centimeters. But especially for this event, for this week, we did uh, transform or we did take uh, the bottles and make them become uh, double magnum, magnum. So everybody at the winery came and made uh, and and made uh, work in order to be on time for the, our distribution. At Chateau Chile, we don't do big format. We vintage only the best years. But we do when we decide to do big format, we do uh, a lot. And for for white wine, uh, we are not used to making it, but uh, probably it gave me an idea <laughs> or uh, doing uh, even for dry white wine to do to do it. So, uh, but for for the red, we do only the best vintage. Yes. And for me, uh, I ask my clients every year before the bottling. Who wants a double magnum? Who wants a Jeroboam? My, ma my maximum size is Jeroboam. And so I know who wants to have big uh, format. So I, just before I ask them, I keep some for, for the boutique uh, on the estate uh, for us. But uh, I really do it sur demande, on, the, on demand. demand. Uh, because uh, well, it's, it's a lot of work, a lot of precision, because you do everything by hand. And uh, so it's, uh, it's important to know where we go. Uh, Lori, it's yeah. Helen. Um, we're getting close to our time, and I want to make sure that you have a chance to ask any remaining questions. Have we covered? I don't know if there's, you know, if there's some, you know, if anybody wants to share anything else. But um, Lori, this has been great. Thank you. I mean, this is just it's really fun to talk and to have such a talk now, especially um, the, you know Sunday's International Women's Day. And this has been a very exciting launch of Women's History Month for all of us in New York. And, and sharing it with you in California is really terrific. So we very much appreciate it. Um, if there's anything else, or just I think we all, everyone has talked no, a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Next time you come to Bordeaux, come to yeah. visit us. And it will be our pleasure to welcome in our uh, estate. Oh, well, thank you very much. I was supposed to be coming in two weeks for uh -huh. entrepreneur. I'm also going to bring my husband this time because I keep telling him how wonderful it is there. So, but thank you, thank you very much for taking time out of your very busy schedule and enjoy New York and enjoy uh, the rest of the time you're here. And I appreciate uh, talking with you. Thank 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 you. Have a great Au afternoon. Bye. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs>If you enjoyed our podcast, please rate, review, and subscribe on your favorite podcast catcher to help others find me more easily. Until next week, slancha.